Hello, I'm John Liu, and I'd like to make a short presentation about the Ecosystem Restoration Cooperative and the Ecosystem Restoration Camps. Over the last 20-some years, I've been studying ecosystem function and dysfunction in terrestrial ecosystems. And I found that actually modern society and modern economy have gone very far away from what we understand about how the atmosphere, the hydrological cycle, the soil fertility, climate regulation are created and, and how they're constantly filtered and continuously renewed. And I found also that it's possible to rehabilitate large-scale damaged ecosystems. So it's not necessary to accept degraded states. It depends on what we understand and what we do. Over the years, I've been wondering how can we engage the largest numbers of people in what we know we need to do, which is get carbon into the biomass and into the organic matter to re-regulate the hydrological cycle, to protect biodiversity, to mitigate against extreme temperatures, artificially elevated temperatures, and artificially elevated evaporation rates. How can we do that? If I look at the permaculture movement and I look at the people who are actually sequestering carbon, so the people who are growing their own compost and who are increasing the vegetative cover on their landscapes, they're the ones who are doing the most to mitigate and adapt to climate change on the planet. Now how could we take that energy and that knowledge and engage millions and hundreds of millions and billions of people to do this work on a larger scale. Recently I was in Spain and our foundation is supporting another cooperative and uh, people who are working to restore but they have, a, a, they have a problem because there are very few people left in the area. It's called Territorios Abandonados. So the people, young people especially, have all left. And the, the landscape is sort of a ruin, but it, it's, it's not that difficult, finally, to restore it if we try. And I thought, well, why don't we just put a camp here? We have now been invited to put a camp there if we can and want to. For five years, we can have a, a, a camp there where people can study and, and actually do ecological restoration at large scale. And my thought was, well, how do we, how do, we do this? Who owns this? How, how does this work? And that's where the concept of the cooperative came into being. I don't think that the big institutions are really able to do what needs to be done right now. They've had decades to do the right thing. And they use tremendous amounts of money. And they're very inefficient. I, I don't have much confidence in their ability to act quickly and engage the largest numbers of people. Could we create a cooperative so that the actual governance is done horizontally by we the people? And I started to think about this. If we, if we all join together, we're much more powerful than if we we're by ourselves. And what do we like to do? We like to garden and we like to go camping. <laughs> so why don't we combine these things and create camps? And in these camps, make them really good fun. Make sure that we have three meals a day of great organic food. And make sure that we are not working too much, so limit the amount of work. But let's make sure that we have, that, that they're aesthetically really pleasing, they're really beautiful, they have the best yurts, they have geodesic domes where we can have the, have the meals, where there's places for theoretical study. Let's realize that 
We're at the end of the fossil fuel era. So let's envision a post-fossil fuel era and not use any fossil fuels inside the camp. Let's have biogas for the kitchen. Let's have solar and potentially wind or other, other energy sources. And let's not use very much energy. Let's use pedal power when we can. Let's use horses. And let's, you know, let's re reduce the work to maybe five hours a day. Let's not work terribly long. Let's work efficiently. Let's work as teams. And let's, let's have a lot of fun. Let's have a more profound conversation. I thought about what, what I feel like in the, in the society now, whether I'm in, in any country around the world now, it's all the same. It's filled with restaurants and stores and, and the, the media, the advertising, the conversations. They're not very profound. They're kind of trivial and maybe profane and, and the, sometimes prejudice and brutalistic. You know, we don't need that. Let's have, let's, let's have a, a happier time. And I realized that if we grow a movement with lots of people, it's going to be pretty easy to build camps. And we'll be able to have camps everywhere. Already people have asked us for, to put camps into Bhutan and Nepal and Kenya and Uganda and Peru. We hope that more people will consider this, will think about this. Could we join together and do what we need to do? Could we train the largest numbers of people? Could we work in all the places that are degraded around the world? Could we do this quickly, efficiently? Because we need to act now. You know, I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is that we can have some fun and we can Restore a little piece of paradise every day. This effort is owned by the people, and already people from 50 countries have signed up. When we get to 1,000, we'll be able to build the first camp. Each member is pledging 120 euros per year. So when we get to 1,000, we'll have raised 120,000 euros to build the first camp in Spain. Um, I think we'll also open up the opportunity to have other funds from different organizations, but I don't think we want the existing organizations to be in charge. I think we want a cooperative of individuals, of people, because we can make decisions faster. And maybe we can work with retired people who don't actually need a job, and we can maybe direct this toward refugee situations or disaster situations or the homeless or the veterans who have post-traumatic stress disorder. So the, the possibilities are really large, but we need to start. I think this is something that we can do and we have to realize that it's something that we're almost, we're called to do and we're obligated to do. More than 4,600 people joined the Facebook page in 10 weeks to discuss this. And what I've seen is that when we do this, we can actually accomplish quite a lot. We can bring back perennial stream flows. The satisfaction when you see a stream that hasn't flowed for some time return and water bubble out of the ground again in a spring, this is fantastic. This is what we need to, to, to see and know and to realize this is not magical. It's depending on our consciousness and our actions. If we understand how these principles work, we can do that. If we ignore them, if we think that our our cell phones and our, our cars and our airplanes and our houses are more important than the Earth's natural ecosystem function, then I think we're in, in really bad shape. We're going to start by putting in woodworking and metalworking fabrication shops. So we'll actually be able to produce the camps ourselves. 
When we're very good at producing camps, we're very good at camping, we're training the largest number of people in how to grow soils, how to grow plants, how to identify plants, how to save seeds, and this is much better than doing nothing at the time when we have a massive crisis. I hope that you'll think about this and join with the other people who have already become members of the cooperative and think about how you would work together with others to organize the cooperative and how you would work with others to organize camps around the world and what you would do in these camps in terms of training, in terms of rep restoration, and in terms of recreation and culture, and in terms of peace building, in terms of making the world safer. I think this is, this is a practical, low-cost, immediate step, and we need to take it. Thanks.